Hi, everyone. It's the Book Cougars, two middle-aged women on the hunt for a good read. I'm Emily. And I'm Chris. And we're here today with two authors. Everyone welcome Aaron Flanagan and Katrina Kittle. So you're going to get four books for the price of two today, or actually all for free. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Should, should we let guests go first? Sure, absolutely. Alphabetical order. Aaron, would you like to go first? I actually had to go through the alphabet in my head. I was like, oh, I wonder who it's going to be. <laughs> That's embarrassing. So yeah, I wanted to share, share uh, Prom Mom by Laura Lippman. This came out last week. And I kid you not, ladies, I went to the library with a bag full of snacks. And I'm like, I'm getting that seven day check out because they you you can't reserve those and I did it about 1 15 after I'd had like six sandwiches and eight bags of chips I got it and I read it in just a matter of days and it's so good it's the setup is um this uh woman this is the opening chapter no spoilers she um this high school girl has a baby in the hotel bathroom after prom and um the boy she's on a date with has like kind of tried to check on her, but feels like, oh, it's okay. And goes to hook up with his ex-girlfriend. And then most of the story takes place 20 years later when this woman has moved back to Baltimore and gets in touch with the dad. And the thing that I love about it, Laura Lippman is one of my favorite authors. She was like my gateway, gateway drug into mysteries. And the there's the prom in the beginning, but then the, the, the story builds to the mystery. It's not like, here's the crime, what happened? It's building. So there's tension just ratcheting up quietly in every chapter. So cannot recommend it enough. It might be my favorite book by her. Oh, wow. Nice. Oh, wow. oh that's so cool. That's so cool. Not a problem to get it for a seven day read. It sounds like Easy. Well, if you're willing to camp out at the library for six hours at <laughs> night, put in the time. That's what I say. Nice. All um, right, Katrina. Okay. Well, so um, the thing I just finished reading that I loved was The Gunkle, which you guys have already talked about. So I'm not going to talk about that. And then I went to get the reading list because of one of your most recent um, episodes by Sarah Nisha Adams, but you've already talked about that and interviewed her. So what I'm going to talk about is that another thing I ordered, um, all the centers bleed by S.A. Cosby. Oh, I God. heard him on fresh air and was completely smitten. And I found out in that interview, his name is Sean. So the, the, the tagline says a black sheriff, a serial killer, a small town ready to combust. So I haven't read it yet, but this is what I'm reading next. And his interview was just amazing. So it's about Titus Crown, who is the first elected black sheriff of Sharon County in Virginia, a town that's still really steeped in its Confederate history. He used to be an FBI agent, this fictional Titus Crown. Um, and now he's the sheriff. And one year to the day of his election as sheriff, there is a murder in the county. Um, a teacher has been murdered by a former student, but the sheriff deputies shoot the student before there can be any kind of investigation or it can come to trial. And as he digs into it, um, it's connected to a bunch of secrets in the town's past that have to do with the Confederacy. He realizes we were dealing with a serial killer that has been hiding in plain sight there in their county. And at the same time, there is this right-wing group trying to do a parade to celebrate their Confederate history. So he's dealing with, it's set in modern times, dealing with a lot of racism, but it's also got this amazing um, mystery kind of thriller in, its, um, in the story. And he, the passages he read, the writing is so elegant and gorgeous and lush. And the story itself just sounds amazing. So I cannot wait to dive into that. But I'm going to do the reading list first. And then all the sinners bleed. Nice. S.A. Cosby. Two very oh, different yeah. books. <laughs> oh my god, I love I love Cosby's writing. I've read two of his previous novels and really enjoyed them. Oh, he's fantastic. Um, yeah. yeah. So can't. Oh, so you know him already? Okay, cool. Yeah. Oh, he's yeah, cool. amazing. Blacktop wasteland. You know, talk about writing elegantly. Writing elegantly about car chases is <laughs> something I never would have imagined. But I just was so enraptured with some of those scenes about car chases or getaway cars, I should say. 
Yeah. Yeah. That was a great interview, by the way, mm. folks that aren't familiar with him, I would highly recommend it. And he talked about like, I mean, that's where he's from, you know, the yeah. area he was writing about mm -hmm. too. So he really has some knowledge of yeah. that, that oh, town. Sounds yeah. good. All right. C, so C comes before C E. Comes before E. So I'm going to be reading um, the field guide to graphic literature hold that up for y'all. Um, and this is by Kelsey Irvick and Tom Hart. And listeners will remember Kelsey Irvick's name. She wrote um, just a couple years ago, a graphic memoir about her time in soccer and how Title IX changed things. Um, that was called The Keeper. Really good. Um, so this, as I said, it just came out from Rose Metal Press. And it's what it says. It's a graphic, uh, a guide to um, graphic literature. And so what it has is, I think there are 28 contributors and um, they have two different tables of contents. So there's one that kind of goes by the different techniques that you use when you're writing a graphic piece of literature, um, you know, from lines and markings to panels and pages and story structure. And then in the back, they have this alternate table of contents that lists things by their genre, basically. So essays, fictional, um, graphic narratives, and stuff like that. So I think this is going to be really fascinating. All of the contributors, for the most part, have, um, they share examples of their work, too, so you can see what things look like. Um, and this is one that's the elements of a comic. So it, it gives you the vocabulary that you need to discuss comics and graphic literature, which is really great for, for newbies. And then um, also the materials um, that you can use, which is kind of neat just to have a little idea of the different things people do. And one thing that was surprising for me is the idea of graphic collage. Hmm. That um, there are artists out there doing that. Well, they'll take you know a piece of a photograph or uh, something from the archives, even um, clip art and things like that, and then base a scene or take a poem and use that in it. So I look forward to reading this um, and looking through it as much as reading it, and to just see the different styles because I'm always amazed at how radically different styles are mm -hmm. when it comes to to graphic novels and and what I prefer and what I don't and why. Um, but I think the cool thing about this is it seems to be based or, or geared toward people who know something about graphic novels, graphic literature, I should say, or people who don't know anything. Um, and then also advanced students wanting to maybe incorporate different types of techniques and things because it has um, some exercises you can do as well, which is cool to help mm. expand people's that artwork. Sounds so great. I have like so many students love graphic literature and I really don't know that much about it. Um, and that's just the kind of thing I would love to recommend to them and also look at myself. So I have like some idea, like you said, the language of it and how to talk about it. I'm going to check that out. Yeah. It's really cool. And Kelsey's memoir too, the keeper, you know, she talked about how we had her on as a guest as well. And she talked about how the first time she assigned her students to do, to, to create a comic, like she'd never even looked at a graphic novel or anything. And then now here she is actually producing them. She just got so, you know, captured by the possibilities of combining visual with words and, and what that has done for her. So, um, yeah. And she's a Cincinnati author. So we didn't even, oh, we thought cool. maybe you that guys cool. would have known her. So that's if you ever, and I, I believe she teaches, so maybe yeah. she'd come and do a guest lecture. I was just wondering, I'm like, oh, oh I know. Know. <laughs> she come one day. I am putting them all <laughs> <Yes>. together. <laughs> well, my book is called Factory Girls. And um, we've had this arc for a long time. It's by Michelle Gallen. She wrote the book, her um, debut was Big Girl, Small Town, which got a lot of press. This is her senior, no, that's not you say, her sophomore novel. And um, I wasn't sure I was going to read it. And then I opened it up. I have to read the first sentence to all of you. So it's Thursday, the 2nd of June, 1994. So it takes place during the time of the Troubles. 74 days until results. 
Maeve Murray was just 18 years old when she first met Andy Strawbridge, but she knew he was a fucker the minute she laid eyes on him. I was like, okay, <laughs> settle into yes. a chair. Let's yeah. count me in. <laughs> count me in. <laughs> so the factory she's working in with two of her good friends is a shirt factory. And all she's trying to do is um, put away some money before she goes to university in London. So maybe I didn't say it takes place in Ireland. I did say during the time of the troubles. So she wants to go to university in London and um, she thinks she's just going to spend a summer um, making money, but apparently there's a lot more that happens with her and her friends. So, oh, but that first that. sentence, oh my gosh, I was like, all right, get a cup of tea. I'm in. Yeah. Very good. Well, four really great books. Yeah, different. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should want to hold them up oh, so sure. people can see them. And then, you know, down below everybody, we have them all written out for you and let us know what you're reading. Thanks for watching.